This is Joab Frank Chakaza with the news on Zodiac, the headlines. National Cancer Center in Lilongwe to become fully operational by June next year. Attorney General demands fresh probe into alleged corruption in immigration uniform deal. Cotton Council of Malawi hopes for a better market within the return of two buyers after a one-year break. In Sports Nebula Association of Malawi elections called off. Now the news in detail. Vice President Saulos Chilima says the National Cancer Center in Nilongwe will become fully operational by June next year, giving new hope to Malawians seeking radiotherapy treatment within the country. He told the media Tuesday after visiting the center that the construction of the bunkers, which is the major work remaining, is expected to start in the next two months. Construction for the center started in 2017 and is expected to cost over 13 billion kwacha. Mother Superior reports. According to cancer specialist and head of the National Cancer Center, which is located at the Kamunzu Central Hospital in Lilongwe, Dr. Richard Nyasasela, it has taken long to construct the bunkers because there were many studies undertaken before proceeding with the construction. And speaking when he visited the center, Vice President Salos Tilima said he was convinced that the new deadline of June 2022 will be met. He explains why. It will work because um, the construction before us, or behind me, the structures, they pretty much went according to schedule. If they went for any changes, I probably think that they would have finished. So if what is behind us was completed within schedule, uh, we should have faith that uh, the bankers and the equipment and indeed the whole thing to be ready, the 12 months they are committing uh, should be done. I have no reason to doubt. But Dr. Nyasasera admitted that the absence of radiotherapy treatment for cancer in the country was having an effect on the patients. The situation is very bad, to be honest, because most of the cases that are coming to this center, they have advanced disease. Say in women, we have cancer of the uterine cervix. It's the number one killer in women. And the majority of them, they need radiotherapy, safe says. So we offer them chemotherapy, but it's on palliative basis. So, as a country, we really need these machines. Radiotherapy treatment for cancer is not locally available in the country. With such treatment found abroad, mostly in countries such as South Africa and India. For Zodiac, this is Madalitso Piri reporting. Senior resident magistrate Akia Wanyongo has on Tuesday granted bail to the five accused top officials and owners of Mapeto David Whitehead and Sons. The court has imposed a 10 million kwacha bail bond for each of the accused with two reliable sureties of blood relation with a 50 million kwacha non-cash bond. The court has also ordered that the accused should surrender their travel documents to authorities and check in every fortnight. Alex Banda has filed this report. Earlier on Tuesday, the five Mabeto David Whitehead and Sons top officials Faizo Gafar Latif, Muhammad Gafar, Abdul Rashid Bakari, Yasin Muhammad and Martin Mpata virtually appeared before the chief resident magistrate, Jean Gailam. One of their lawyers, Frank Mbeta, told us the five have pleaded not guilty to the 15 charges bordering around tax evasion and money laundering. Two Malawi Revenue Authority MRA Customs Officers, George Maluka and Tepiso Kaunda, who were implicated in the matter, have also pleaded not guilty to the charges. MRA claims the textile manufacturing company was systematically defrauding government revenue in excess of 10.8 billion kwacha. Counsel for MRA, Beatrice Mangwela, an eighth accused person from Mapeto David Whitehead and Sons, is at large and will be charged on the same offenses. Mangwela also told the court that the Director of Public Prosecution, Dr. Stephen Kayuni, and two other lawyers from Financial Intelligence Unit who joined the case as the state. This person was the procurement uh, manager for Maveto Limited, and uh, we are yet to effect an arrest on him. And uh, we're hoping that uh, he may also show up in the, in the course of uh, uh, conducting this case. But if he doesn't show up, whatever time he, he, he is apprehended, then we'll have to bring him separately before the court to take plea as well, because he's charged together with the rest. On June 3, 
MRI says will also confiscate all record books from Mapeto, which will be tendered as evidence. Later on Tuesday afternoon, the five top officials at Mapeto appeared before senior resident magistrate Akia Monyongo for their bail application. Monyongo granted the five bail on conditions each of the accused pay two million kwacha, present before the court two reliable sureties of blood relation with a 50 million kwacha non cash bond. The court has also ordered that all the accused surrender their travel documents to authorities and check in every fortnight. For Zodiac and Blanta, this is Alex Banda. And in Lilongwe, a state witness in the case involving former Director General of the Malawi Energy Regulatory Authority, Mera, Collins Magalasi and three others, has told the court on Tuesday that procurement of branded cloth by the authority flouted procurement procedures. Chief Regulatory Officer for the Office of the Department of Public Procurement and Disposal of Assets, PPDA, Frank Newa, says the value of the procurement was above the threshold of the method which was used. Newa says that the value was 36 million kwacha when it was not supposed to be more than 30 million kwacha. Director of Public Prosecution, Steve Kayuni, explains. The two witnesses were uh, um, an official from uh, the Registrar General's Office, Taji Dede, and uh, another official from uh, uh, the Procurement Authority. These were coming to testify on two issues to do with the documents, that uh, there was a registration of Vink Enterprises Limited at the Registrar General's Office, and uh, that also the same entity went on to secure registration at uh, the Procurement Regulated Authority for the fact that uh, they should be able to supply goods to government. The evidence that was put in court was to the effect that uh, those two entities undertook registration on behalf of uh, companies that had uh, in them details of some of the accused persons. The second witness was the effect that uh, there was a demonstration that uh, there was no approval from uh, the procurement entity as to the thresholds that were being procured at uh, Mera at the time. Attorney General Dr. Chikosa Silungwe has demanded a fresh probe into alleged corruption in the 12.3 billion kwacha supply of uniform contract to the Department of Immigration by two companies owned by businessman Karim Batawala. In a letter dated 23 March, Dr. Silungwe requests the Anti-Corruption Bureau to institute a new probe into the matter and ensure perpetrators are brought to book. ACP Senior Public Relations Officer Egrit Andala has confirmed receipt of the letter and that investigations of the matter are underway. John Pokayuni reports. Two companies, namely Reliance Trading Company and African Commercial Agency belonging to Karim Batawara, entered into six contracts to supply uniforms to the Department of Immigration in 2009, 2010 and 2012 at the cost of 12.3 billion Malai Kwacha. Attorney General Dr. Chikosa Sirungwe suspects the contracts were dubiously entered into. He alleges that the Department of Immigration officials from the then Office of Director of Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Authority facilitated a suspicious transaction of the supply of uniform contracts in a letter dated 23 March to the Anti-Corruption Bureau ACB with copies to the Director of Public Prosecutions, the Police, the Immigration Department, and Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Authority. The Attorney General says the contracts which were overcommitted to the government were not duly approved by the Secretary to the Treasury. The AG has therefore asked SCB to carry fresh investigations into the matter and take to task all perpetrators when contacted SCB Senior Public Relations Officer Egrit Andala confirmed the receipt of the letter and said investigations are still underway on the matter. For Zodiac, this is John Paul Kayun. And Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources and Climate Change has directed the Anti-Corruption Bureau, ACB, to immediately conduct investigations on claims by National Oil Company of Malawi, Nokma, that some government officials are interfering in the procurement process of fuel. This is part of recommendations in a report the committee, through its chairperson, Wilani Chilenga, presented Tuesday before the August House on procurement of fuel by Nokma 
and the role being played by the Malawi Energy Regulatory Authority, MERA. The report has reiterated that NOKMA should be responsible for the awarding of fuel importation contracts. Chimwemwe Padata has filed this report. The Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources is concerned the fuel deals standoff could have negative implications on the economy if not urgently resolved. Committee Chairperson Wirani Jirenga presented a report in Parliament with a number of recommendations, including one that SCB immediately institutes investigations that some officials are interfering in the importation of fuel. National Oil Company of Malawi, NOGMA, and Malawi Energy Regulatory Authority, MERA, are tussling over the importation of fuel, but the committee has recommended NOGMA should be responsible for the importation of fuel, while MERA should operate as a regulator. The report has also favored local fuel importers, recommending that they should dominate in the importation of fuel, unlike those from other countries. The period that has taken, instead of the process of procuring fuel taking only four months, it is going into the eighth month now. And as a committee, we cannot allow that. Nokuma has got approvals from PPDA, they have got approvals from SCB, they have got approvals from government contracting unit, and we are recommending that Nokuma should go ahead following the laws do the procurement process so that we should not be plunged into a fuel crisis like what happened in 2012. We are not going to allow that. It is now close to eight months from the required four months of fuel importation process, a delay that is attributed to the current impasse. Members of parliament this afternoon are to provide their inputs on some of these recommendations. Reporting from parliament, this is Chimwemwe Padata. No. You're watching the news here on Zodiac. We'll be back with more after this. If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From packets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. People only! People only! Who is at TNM Kuyambida 200 Kwacha? Kapena kuposila pa menepo, mucha ukala mozi mwama milionea mu TNM Tikolole promotion. Kumamuka onjezila ma units ni 100 kwacha kapena uposela hapo Mutzandia ma bonus oi mbida phone ni SMS kapena data pompo pompo TNM always with you Like every mom, you want the best for your child Happy birthday You feed her mind and nurture her body And you understand there are times you have to let her pick herself up when she falls. You make sure she knows the joy of sharing happy moments with family. And when everything comes together, you above all others will share the taste of success with her. Blue Band tastes like mama's love. Welcome back here. The top stories once again. National Cancer Center in Lilongwe to become fully operational by June next year. Attorney General demands fresh probe into alleged corruption in immigration uniform deal. Cotton Council of Malawi hopes for a better market with the return of two buyers after a one year break. In sports, Nebula Association of Malawi elections called off. Moving on, Cotton Council of Malawi says it hopes for a better market this year with two ginners that ditched the market last year amid COVID-19 pandemic rejoining ADMAC in the procurement of the crop this year 
currently underway. The council's executive director, Cosmas Luanda, is optimistic, ADMAC, and that the two companies, Afrasian and Malawi Cotton Company, will buy all the 21,000 metric tons of cotton grown this year, unlike last year. Meanwhile, Cotton Farmers President Dixon Gundani says the cotton market season has kicked off on a sound note with the price now at 340 kwacha per kilogram, unlike last year when the crop fetched 150 kwacha per kilogram. Andrew Viano's father report. Roughly a month into this year's cotton market, the crop has seen an improvement in sales compared last year. In last market season, the emergence of COVID-19 pandemic affected international demand for the produce, leading to a sharp drop in prices. But this year, three buyers have turned out on the market, a development that has seen an increase in prices. Cotton Council of Malawi Executive Director Cosmas Luanda says about 6,000 metric tons of cotton has been sold this farm. We have got three dinners. We have got Africa Limited, we have got Admac Limited, and uh, we have got the Malawi Cotton Company as three dinners that are participating uh, in seed cotton buying uh, this particular season. The estimates that we are getting are indicating that we are going to have something like 21,000 metric tons of seed cotton. As expected, we had a slow start because of a delayed rainfall season that we had. So planting was protracted over a lengthy period and therefore seed cotton uh, picking also started very slowly and it has picked up now. So presentation of seed cotton on the market has now reached its peak. Meanwhile, Cotton Farmers Association President Dixon Gundani says the cotton market looks promising this year. Gundani has further held buyers saying they are sticking to the prices set by government. Malawi will this year produce 21,000 metric tons of cotton. The reap this year is lower than 50,000 metric tons produced last year. Auction Holdings Limited, AHL Group, says there has been an improvement in tobacco sales with the average price now at $1.67 per kilogram and rejection rate at 47% compared to 92% in the first week. Market sales update given on Tuesday by spokesperson for the company, Teresa Ndanga, indicates that the country has traded 30.3 million kilograms in five weeks. And this is 5 kilograms better than 25.8 uh, kil- million kilograms during the same period last year. Despite this development, some uh, farmers we have spoken to are of the view that they are still being ripped off and that the industry will continue to shrink. We have a report filed by Western Kuta. The good news as of now is that there is an improvement in the rejection rate, which is now at 47% from 92 in the first week, which many farmers lamented. According to AHL Group spokesperson Teresa Ndanga, the tobacco market is improving with 30.3 kilograms sold by the end of week 5, realizing $50.6 million at an average price of $1.67 per kilogram. This is compared to 25.8 million kilograms during the same period last year, which fetched $39.4 million at an average price of $1.55 per kilogram. In comparison, we will see that uh, on the auction market, it's relatively higher. And uh, that is especially because we see a bit of um, some of the challenges in terms of storage of tobacco or grading of tobacco. They are more prominent on the auction market. So I'm talking about um, the state in, in which this tobacco is, such as being moody, and sometimes the grades are mixed. However, some farmers we have talked to feel that they are still being ripped off since their input cannot be in the least be compared to what they are realizing from the sales. The tobacco marketing season this year opened on 20th April at Kanengo auction floors in Lilongwe, followed by Chinkoma in Kasungu on April 22nd, Limbi on April 26th, and finally in Zuzu auction floors on 10th May. Reporting for Zodiac, this is Western Guta. Malawi Police Wildlife Detection Unit has expressed concern over community passiveness to report wildlife crimes for investigations. Deputy Commissioner of K-9 Section Assistant Superintendent Charles Piri says the community is key in as far as tracking of perpetrators of wildlife is concerned to combat wildlife crimes. He was speaking on Monday at Linyangwa Kachuro Village where the Department of Parks and Police demonstrated how police talks detect wild animal specimens from traffickers. Nongkubi reports. Ah, ah. 
The Malay Police Service established the Wildlife Detection Unit as one of combating wildlife crimes in the country. The unit, among others, uses sniff dogs in airports, roadblocks and other places to detect traffickers of wildlife specimens. However, Deputy Commissioner responsible for Canine Section Assistant Superintendent Charles Perry is concerned that the public is not coming forth with tips of suspected wildlife specimen traffickers. He observed that communities are key if the country was to win a fight against trafficking of wildlife specimen, including ivory and pangolins. So these dogs are so vital, in fact, they can detect something that even a human being cannot be able to detect. So we are very sure if people can come with the information, we will be successful. Kasungo National Park Head of Environmental Education and Extension Section, Matthias Elisa, has aided the public not to shield perpetrators for the country to save its God-given natural resources. So it is important that uh, people themselves have uh, that responsibility to report, not only to the police, they can also report to their local leadership like chiefs, but also report to the nearest um, park officers which are close to them. In his remarks, Senior Chief Ilwoko of Kasungu described the wildlife detection demonstration by the Department of Parks, Malawi Police and the Rongo Wildlife Trust as an eye-opener. For Zodiac, this is Noel Kubi reporting. And now to sports. Netball Association of Malawi Executive Committee elections that were slated for this Saturday in Salima have been called off. Malawi National Council of Sports Chief Executive Officer Henry Mereka says the decision is to pave way for investigations into complaints of alleged bribery during nomination of candidates. One of the aspirants for the presidency, Amy Waya Chongwe, withdrew from the race, citing bribery by her rivals. Some Banda reports. All the electoral processes for the much-anticipated Netball Association of Malawi NAMO Executive Committee elections have been halted following Sports Council's intervention to launch investigations into complaints of alleged bribery that marred the nomination exercise which closed on May 15th. The Council's Executive Secretary Henry Merica says the Council received the complaints three days ago and has not hesitated to launch investigations thereby suspending the NAMO elections for fear of jeopardizing the investigations. Merica says NAM will also be advised on when to proceed with the elections and the Sports Council will set procedures that will guide the elections to make them credible and fair. That's basically the decision that Council uh, has taken for Council to thoroughly uh, look at the irregularities that uh, have been alleged. Uh, Council needs time. Uh, to look at that uh, until such allegations have been cleared. Suppose to say that I think Council will at that point have issued the proper guidelines that uh, takes care of all the issues that have been raised. But NAM General Secretary Karo Bapo insists the elections will proceed on Saturday because the association hasn't been served with the said Sports Council's notice of suspension. We know that the elections are going to take place on Saturday 29th May. At the moment, we haven't received any complaint from the Sports Council. We haven't gotten in touch with the Sports Council. Maybe they are here to communicate to us, but as I'm talking to you, I've not uh, heard anything from the Sports Council. So as far as NAM is concerned, we can say that the elections are still on and they're going to take place on Saturday, 29th of May. The presidency, which tips incumbent Kungekire Matia, former Queen's player Amy Waya Chongwe, and former Treasurer General and camp politician Abigail Sharif, has emerged as the epicenter of the election. That's it for now. Let's take another look at the headlines before we leave. National Cancer Center in Longwe to become fully operational by June next year. Attorney General demands fresh probe into alleged corruption in immigration uniform deal. Cotton Council of Malawi hopes for a better market with the return of two buyers after a one-year break. In Sports Naval Association of Malawi elections, called off. 
visit our website zorekmanayu.com for more news. Now, COVID-19 vaccination is underway in the country. Make a decision. Protect yourself. Protect your loved ones. My name is Joe Frank Chakaza. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.